So I've been watching back over some old computer file videos, as we all do, and uh, I was watching a video by Tom Rodden on cookies. How then do you do the little shopping carts? And he talks a lot about tracking cookies, which are a big deal, right? And so just side note, I would say everyone should install Ghostry uh, and stop people tracking their whereabouts and what they're up to and what they're browsing online. Um, but I'm not talking about cookie uh, tracking cookies today or persistent cookies. I'm talking about cookie stealing which is the idea of if I can get hold of your cookie from your browser in some way, I can then pretend to be you on that website. Perhaps a bit of a recap on what it is that a cookie does so that this puts it into context. Now, of course, if you want to know a lot more about cookies, you go back and look at Tom's video. HTTP and HTML are not persistent. Okay? I make a request to a website, it serves me HTML and maybe JavaScript and that's the end of the transaction as far as it's concerned. I make another request, it's a brand new transaction. Right, so there's no standard way in that mechanism of me persisting, right? So when you say you make a request, that means, for example, you click on a link or something? Yeah, so if, yeah, I go into a Google, I type www.google.co.uk, or I click on a link in a web page that takes me to another web website. Or indeed, my browser needs to request an image from a server because I've clicked the plus icon on something and I'm trying to look at an image high res. So even if you're on the same site, yep. you're clicking on different links on that same yep. site. It It'll start a new connection or use the existing connection to send off another HTTP request, which is basically just a string and says, I want this file, please send it back. And the server will hopefully send it back. Because this isn't persistent, ob the obvious problem is that how do we do things like shopping baskets? And I'm on stage five of six stages in setting up my online banking or something. How do we remember what I've already typed in? The way we do this is using cookies. So the first ever time I visit a website, it might send me back a cookie that's maybe a unique identifier to me. Okay, so just let's say a string of numbers, right? And then I think, well, I'm gonna go back to that website and it'll register. So I type in my username that I want, and I send off the username and request for the next page. And I also send back this unique string of numbers. And the reason is because then the server can look in the database and go, oh yeah, I remember him, he was the one that was using this username, and I can now serve him this slightly different web page where the username's already typed in or I have already remembered what's in his shopping basket or something like this. That's what a cookie is for. Now, of course, now, as Tom rightly points out, they're also used for tracking your, what you are up to online. So banner ads and things will use tracking cookies to keep track of you between websites, which is kind of worrying. But again, not gonna talk about that any more than to draw people's attention to how scary it is. Right? The problem is that if I obtain a cookie off you, which is supposed to be secure, then I can send that to, let's say, Amazon or to a shop and say, I'm Sean, please, you know, what's in his shopping basket? What's his address? What's his credit card details? Um, can I change the address of this? You know, if I do that halfway through your transaction, when you have typed in your details, I can just override and change the shipping address and get stuff sent to my house instead. Okay, it's involved, but it could, it could happen, right? If I can get hold of that cookie. Now, those cookies are stored by the browser Okay, and they're on your computer, so that's quite difficult for me to do. But cross-site scripting is a very easy way of doing it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to steal a cookie and we're going to do it using a cross-site scripting attack. Now this ties back into a different video Tom Scott did on cross-site scripting. But what we're basically going to do is we're going to inject a script into a blog, right? not a secure blog, I should say. Okay. And it, that is going to, when anyone else visits the site, obtain their session cookie and send it to me. Right, and that I could theoretically use to take over their session. This is the world's best blog, of course. Right? It looks good and it's got good content on it. There's a picture of a kitten and some kind of banner, and that's pretty much it, okay? And some Laura Mitson. And But then this blog has crucially got a comments feed at the bottom. So if we look at the comments, many thanks, love the blog, that sort of stuff. It's all very positive, oh, well, nearly. And the point is I can type extra comments in here. So I can say, uh, thanks, exclamation mark, from Mike again, and I can post this in, and then when I scroll to the bottom, there it is, okay, and the time that I did it on. This is just the kind of time where a cross-site scripting attack is possible if you haven't coded your website properly, which in this case I haven't, okay. So what I need to be doing when someone types some, some text in here is making sure that's what it is, and it isn't in fact valid HTML script, right, or JavaScript. Because if it is, then what happens is this browser receives it back from the server and has no reason to think that that isn't just part of what the server intended, right because it's just a script tag like any other. The server will probably be serving script tags anyway, right, for doing other things, and it just serves another one, that's fair enough. I mean, they do that all the time. So we run it, okay, and then that's where there's a problem. So it's a responsibility of the server and the person programming the server to make sure that when I submit data, it doesn't 
um, it is an actual script right, or things that can run. Okay? So this is a very similar to an SQL injection, except we're, putting S we're injecting HTML instead of SQL. Okay? They're very similar kinds of attacks. So let's see if this works. The most obvious example will be a really simple one. Let's just see if we can get a pop-up to appear. So I'm going to open and closing HTML tags, and then we're going to say alert XSS exclamation mark. Okay. So theoretically what will happen is this page will serve these comments to me when I go to this website and they will see this script and not think it's a comment. They will think it's part of the actual web page to be run and executed and then they're off there we'll go. So let's see if it works. I need to put a name. Okay. So I don't want to incriminate myself. So let's put in someone else. So like Sean, for example, I click submit. So I, I reload this web page with someone else. I get a little pop up that says localhost XSS. Okay, so the server's telling me XSS exclamation mark. This is where you stop and then you go off and tell them about it. But you can go further than this. To be absolutely clear, this is my own website running on my laptop, right? It's not secure on purpose and it doesn't matter if I hack it because no, one, no harm is coming of this. Okay, I wouldn't ever do this on a, on a public website. So I've just loaded some files to show you how the blog works behind the scenes so you get an idea of what, what's going on. So this is PHP, right? So it's going to be a mixture of PHP code and HTML, right? Some of which um, is the result of PHP and some of which is just put in. So here you can see that I call something called session start. Now what session start is going to do is PHP is going to look to see if the cookie they received is a valid session and if it is it's going to resume my session <coughs> it's going to remember who I am and any parameters that this website has set for me will be remembered in the database. If there is no cookie on file for me that means I'm coming at it for the first time or my session expired and it will make one and send it back to me in the first response. Right. Now that all happens within this session start thing. It's not something I need to concern myself with as a developer. Okay, you can do it yourself. Now I've got standard submit comments. Okay, so I output the blog text and then I check if someone clicks submit comment button, it will check the post values for content and their name and then it will put them into the database. Now, as a side note, I am actually escaping these MySQL strings. There we are. So I'm not vulnerable here to a MySQL injection because of these bits. So that's good, but right? I'm not vulnerable to an SQL injection. Unfortunately, I am vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So I'm not doing any kind of cross-site scripting detection here. Okay, I'm just gonna serve back whatever the person typed in. Now, as an attacker, what I've done is I've created another PHP file called submitcookie.php. That is a, just a, a file that takes as a parameter, a string of a cookie, stores it in a database on these two lines here, and then serves them back an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a cross-site scripting attack, which is basically a comment on this blog that causes their website or their client to visit this submitcookie.php and give them the cookie. Okay, so because this is, this is one question that I remember rising when we've talked about these sorts of things before, is the difference between client and server side. Yeah. So you're doing some code that will cause the server to come and find yeah. this code. Imagine that I've, so imagine that there is no PHP and there is no script, right? All there is is a website with some images on it, okay? You're the server and I'm the client. I say, can I get index.html? Index you say, yeah, here it is, okay? I read it and show it on the screen. And then I realize that actually it's got an image in it that has a source that's like your website slash image one dot JPEG, right? So I say, oh, okay, I need this too. Can I have JPEG, this JPEG, and you send it back? So I make multiple requests to you to get the various bits of content. Just like that, and just like with a banner ad, I might come to a bit in the HTML that tells me to go to some other website or something else. And then, and there's no reason for me to think that isn't a reasonable request. Maybe your images are stored on a different server so I'm going to go there, okay? So I go, oh, there's an image and I need that from over here. So I go over there and I get it, right? The fact that it also bags my cookie is just an unfortunate side effect, but it's not something that was necessary and it wasn't something that was intended when they developed the web, but it's unfortunately what happens now. Um, so that's what's going to happen, okay? Maybe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start with a script. So we already know this blog is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, so I don't need to worry specifically about it. I don't have to obfuscate it or anything clever. I'm going to say document.write. Okay, now that's just going to write nothing to the screen, right? So my comment on my blog is just going to be a script that does nothing. Okay, that's not very interesting. So let's do something a bit more interesting. Our PHP file takes a cookie and gives an image back, so let's just show it on the screen, right? So image tag in HTML, IMG is the image tag. The source of that is HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Now this could obviously be a different website, slash submit cookie.php question mark. Now this takes get requests. So I say submit cookie.php question mark and then I say cookie equals and then that's when I'm going to steal their cookie and give it to myself. Right. To do that, all I do is I say plus 
document.cookie, I escape this so that it, it passes nicely over HTML, plus, and then I've got to close my image tag because otherwise it's going to be malformed HTML and it might not execute properly. And then a single quote. Okay, so let's just break down what this is doing. The script here is telling the website that this is a script to be run, not a standard piece of HTML. Then the document.write function is just a piece of JavaScript that says dump this out as text. Okay, but it can also take parameters rather than just text. Yeah. Okay? It's going to output some valid HTML, which is a link to an image, but that image is not held on this server, it's held theoretically elsewhere. Okay? Now, the actual thing that is, that's returning an image is a PHP file, not an actual image, okay? which also takes the parameter the cookie, which is a bit worrying. Right? So when I first went to this blog, I requested index.php. The server started executing this and called the session start function, right? which went, oh, he needs a, a session cookie, and sent me one okay, in the response. So I then bagged that session cookie and put it in my browser. Then when I visit that blog again, I return that session cookie to the server. To say it, it's me again. Yeah, and so if I had, a, if I had some, some persistence on this blog, like I was in the middle of writing a document and it was half written, it would remember who I was. Now, um, so this cookie is stored by my browser and theoretically the attacker can't get to it because it's on my browser, not theirs. Right? So what you have to do is trick the browser into sending it back. So the, so the order of things happen are, I then send an index.php request to this blog to look at it. Yeah. Okay. It sends me back a, 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 a big website with stuff on it, including some comments, one of which has a script in it that says, there's an image here you need yeah. okay, at this PHP file. Okay. So I go, oh, brilliant, and I get my document cookie and I send it off to that PHP file, and I get back an image, and I think nothing's gone wrong but they've now got my cookie. But the cookie went off to the place where off. the image was supposedly. Yeah. And of course, this will return an image, but in some cases it would return nothing, and there'll be no evidence that this has happened at all, apart from if you actually looked at the source code for the file, which of course, you know, someone's going to do, but no one, no one normally is going to do. So if this got onto a forum or something, yeah. lots of people could look at this before they realised what was going on. Now, it's not unusual for an image to be served by a script rather than by an actual hard link to an image, yeah. because, for example, um, might be an advert or it might be an advert dynamically created it could be a different there could be a resolution specified in there or you know there could lots of different reasons why you do that okay so a lot of the time it's going to be dynamically generated yeah. in some way yeah. so this is no different to that except that this is also taking a parameter that it shouldn't be taking okay, okay? but I've got no control over that and the the browser it's not that it's insecure it's just got it's got no reason to doubt me yeah. you know scripts using document.cookies legitimately you know exist and if you block them, then websites start to fall down because they use cookies for persistence. So it's a, you know, it's a real problem. So let's click submit and see what happens. So yeah. what have you done now? You've refreshed it? Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't work because I've done it wrong. You know what? I didn't type in my name. That's why I didn't work. Uh. Uh, <laughs> so Mike, right, I'll take credit for this one. So we can submit that and then we run it. Okay, and we scroll down and we've got a cookie monster picture. So kindly, the submit cookie.php has taken my cookie and returned an image. Okay. Now, it's not unusual for people to have images on comments or on forum posts and things. So people seeing this image, apart from the fact that it's a cookie monster, might not realise what had just happened. Okay. It's completely silent. It's happened behind the scenes. All that's happened is they just quickly whipped their cookie off to someone else and returned an image. Okay. These kind of requests for images happen all the time. It's just this one has got a cookie on it. And that's bad news. As an attacker, this is my database. And I select star from evil, which is the name of my table that's registering the cookie, you can see that my session cookie now, PHP sess ID is stuck in here. So that's the session cookie for that session of PHP. Now, in this blog, that doesn't have much effect, right? Firstly, because I already have this cookie, but mostly because there isn't anything on this blog that having a cookie will help with, right? It won't let you get to my basket or get to my credit card details or login. Okay? But if you did this on a website where um, there was shopping involved or money involved or a banking website and they've not properly coded it, getting that session cookie could trick the bank into thinking that you're resuming their session. You know, they could get so, me so much distance into, let's say, a transaction, then you could steal their session and go in and just change the bank account details to yours. Right? And the bank doesn't really have any idea of knowing that. People's um, session cookies are the only thing that really tie them to that, that thing to that website. I mean, you can do more and complicated things, like you can, you can um, pin IPs to session cookies, for example, right? But the people's IPs change. Okay? They might move from one Wi-Fi area to another, their IP changes. Do you necessarily want them to have to re-authenticate? Perhaps you do for security, right? But it depends on the way the website is developed.
This is sort of a prime example of a time of check to time of use issue, okay, which is a security term, which is basically the idea of something changing between when someone authenticates and when they do something and causing a security problem. So I type in a username and password on Amazon, right? then 10 minutes later I've wandered off, someone else turns up and spends all my money shipping stuff to their address. Okay? Now that will be a problem. So what Amazon does is they force me to re-authenticate just before I actually type in my details. Okay, right before you transact, you can add all, I can add loads of stuff to my basket without having to authenticate myself. It's remembered that from last time. But as soon as I actually have to do anything proper, like spending any money, it's going to ask me for my credentials again. Same with online banking. If I use my um, bank, if I log into my online banking, I use some kind of chip and pin device to authenticate myself. That lets me, the first time, it lets me see my bank balances. But if I want to send any money, it's going to ask me again because it can't risk me wandering off by mistake, leaving that browser open, or someone having stolen my cookie. We keep carving away at this, and what we'll end up with is something that looks nearly like a cube. So we probably maybe a bit, a bit of extra there, and a bit of extra there and there, but we'll get it, we're getting there. Okay? Now some objects obviously are more amenable to this than others, but the more images we get, the better it is.